All right, we can commence now. Okay. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Uh, I, I think you're supposed to start off first. <laughs> yeah. Both. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. So uh, today's um, um, event will be a kind of dynamic. So we want to start first with the live coding, then at the end with the the question and answers. So uh, let me introduce to you our speaker. Uh, is Andrew Babalawu is a senior developer and. I respect him a, a lot. So he's a wizard in Android development. So he will be taking us on the live coding session for the Dice Rolling app. So hopefully after our session today, we might start uh, the the prior experience hands on study jam so that we can have something to gain also from the prior experience. So the reason why we had the beginner's guide was for us to have this understanding of this uh, study jam, then we cannot move to prior experience so that we can have more knowledge about it. So without wasting much of our time, let me quickly welcome our speaker to the podium. So you're welcome, sir. Um, um, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is um, Muhammad Akuridi Kosim, and I'm under developer, just like um, you guys, right? So um, without taking much of your time, uh, can I share my screen, boss? Yes, yes, you can share. Okay. So um, I I think everyone can see my screen right now. Yeah, we can see. Okay. Okay. Fine. That's fine now. So um. Um, I think I, I don't know if you have um, had any live coding session before or if you all have like prior um, experience with um, Android Studio and Kotlin in general. Uh, we did um, a live coding session in the last um, in the last call we had, but we won't mind if you can just watch us through and have a, a okay. go. Okay then. Um, uh, for this um, uh, session, we'll be building a dice rolling app, more like a game, and uh, we'll be using Kotlin as our um, preferred uh, language, our language of choice for building the app. So, um, I, because I, I must confess, my internet foundation is poor, and I had to leave my house to a nearby mosque to to like get a better um, internet connection. So I'm using Glow. I'm sorry for that. I was using Echo before. I had no choice of We are grateful, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I created this project before the before the class because of the slow internet connection because my understood my need to like download some um, dependencies and everything like that. But, um, maybe I should just try and go through the process, the creation process, the new project creation process again. And if it goes faster, then we are good. If it doesn't, I'll just close and come back to this one here. So uh, normally we'll have your Android Studio in this screen when you open your Android Studio. So we are creating a new project now. And um, for most of the time, this is what you need, empty activity, the template. So we select that. Then we give our app a name. Let's roll out. Let me change it to OK, fine. So this is the package name. You make sure that your package name, this is more like a unique identifier for your app. No two applications have the same package name. If you have the same package name for two for two different apps, just like let's assume that we have like the Gmail app now, the package name is com.gmail. Then by mistake, com.gmail was assigned to 
Play Store, the Play Store app itself again. The two won't install on the same phone. One will, will have to override the other. So this is what the package name is. And most of the time, just make sure that it's the name of your website in a reverse order. Like if I'm just assuming my, my website is coercion.com now. So I'm using com.coercion.com, the name of the app. So this is the same location. And this is the preferred language you're writing the, the, the app in. And we just got them. So and the minimum SDK here is just to, um, to limit your app to um, specific Android versions. So the minimum is the minimum, the lowest Android OS your app will run on. You could select the lowest of the low, but that will affect the performance and how your app looks like. So we can leave that um, to another time because of the time constraint. So we click finish here. So, and I'm hoping it wouldn't need to download any other thing. Uh, Ready to build, it's built in. So let's switch to another thing. I can't use emulator, so I'll be using the screencast and I think it's very okay too. So I would be following, um, boss, I, I suppose they have the link to the um, study jam, right? Yes, yes. yes. So I think I have it opened here. Okay, now this is it right here. So um, in case if you want to follow along, I won't, I would, I won't be opening this, um, uh, this page often. So in, in case you want to follow along or after the, after the call, you want to go and practice it on your own, you can come here to get um, the overview of what we are building. I don't know, this is my internet connection being slow again. I'm sorry for that. So, and I assume um, we have like some basics. Um, we all understand some basics, uh, Kotlin basics before. So, um, yes. Okay, fine, that's fine then. So, we can write some code here to get some concept on the um, Kotlin um, playground console. Let me close this. Okay, yeah. So, here is the code lab we're following, the Dice Roller app, here it is still loading. Okay, so here it is the Dice Roller. So this is the first code lab. I think there are four code labs there before the quiz. So using Kotlin background, so we are just going to write some um, Kotlin code here to get um, some concept before we go to the, um, the main and just to, to build the okay. Well, wow, it's working. So before we start building our app, so we are going to build a dice roller app, and the app will have like two views. Have two views. So the two views would be an image view that will contain the dice that we are rolling and a button. The button will be um just a normal button. When you click on it, it's rolls your dice and this will be like the real like you are playing a dice game real in real life like when you know when you throw a die it's you have like one over six probability that a number is going to show up so that's how it is so this one won't be hard coding anything we'll be writing the code and just make the computer generate a, a random side for the dice course so here we could get so the concept we are going to use is like uh, this um, Kotlin um, library that will be the random library. And since we all have experience using Kotlin before, so we, are going, we are just going to initialize a variable here. Let's call it um, dice number. Um, dice number. So there's something in Kotlin called a range. Range is like um, you want you want to um, you want a specific set of numbers from a number to a number. So let's say uh, let's say we want to have a numbers from twenty to fifty. We want to save it in a variable. Not that you want to initialize variables for each and every one of them. That will take time, and that will, you, your code will look very very long. So we have something called range in. In Kotlin. 
So you could say 20, use two dot without any space and say 60. So automatically it saves the numbers from 20 to 60. 20 and 60 inclusive in the dice number here. So this is what is called coupling, or this is what's called range in coupling. So we could change it to one to any number you want. 600, 6,000, 6 million, anything. Okay. So now, but in a die, in a normal die, we have, I think we have up to 120 or 110. I, I forgot the name of this complex die. It has one and something inside, I forgot it. So, but we are assuming we are, we are using a normal die here. That would be one, two, three, four, five, and six, only six faces. So that means we let's use a range of one to six. So we have one, two, six. We have that. But then we want to generate, want the compiler to just pick a, a number at random without being biased at all from this one to six. So we could have something like dice number, but you can have random. Know why this is not so this this random this is a method called on this dice number it generates it takes any number from one to six inclusive so we can print this let's print this and see what happens um, I thought I copied that sorry so um dice number okay let's run that so we have here we have three i assume you can all hear me right yes okay yes yes okay, okay fine so we have a random number within one and six and that is three so we can run again if you choose, if you choose another number one. Run again, you have another number. One again. It's just random. It's just a coincidence. Another one, you have six. So even if you want to generate one to six hundred, have it like that. One eighty three. Okay, fine. I think we are we're good on that side, right? So now we now we know how to generate random numbers for our dice. So that means we can just put this in a method or in our own click listeners. Click listeners are more like a method, uh, like they are methods like for views. Uh, whenever you click them, it listens, it waits for the user to click that button, then it, execute, it executes the code in the listener. So you can put this in our listener and have it generate and put this on the screen. So I, I think that concept is clear now. Picking at random. Yes, yeah, it is. Okay, fine. So we can go back to um if you check the um the code lab here, I just want to have my internet connection doesn't mess this up. Okay. I think I took this code. Okay, yeah. If you follow here, you will see everything there with explanation, detailed explanation. So if you want to go over it, you can go over it. Um, so let's just go to our uh, to our um, industry and let's design the, the view. So we have this uh, view here. I'll be using the um, the design tab. Actually, I'm more comfortable with writing the code here, but then it's slower than using the design. So I'm going to use the design for the purpose of this class. So we have the design here. So we have the text here. Okay, so let's let's leave it as a text first. We will switch back to using image to see the, the die itself. So let's let's add, okay, let's change some configurations of this. Uh, okay, it doesn't have ID. I'm sorry, I'm using the text again. <laughs> So let's use ID, let's add an ID, let's say um dice number. I think the, the um simpler is die, no mistake. Let's just go on. So let's add our button. 
can pick a button from here. Let me expand. Here's a button. You can drag here. Let me zoom this. Okay, so we are using constraint layer layout now. I think we are all familiar with constraint layout, right? Yes, all the right? last uh, the yes, we... last the last class we had we just explained. Okay, okay, fine, fine. But that, that's fine then. So you can constrain this to this, this to this, 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 then give this padding. I think this is okay like this. Right? So this button, let's change the text on it. Um row. Then let's change the ID to button row. So Don't touch my project file, so now click that. So, and let's remove this text here. I'd like to make it a little bit bolder. And let's use the tools to just display something here. So, um, tools. I hope you all know what this means, right? Using these tools. You can help us explain. Okay. So um, you 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 notice that when I erased the hello world that was put in this place before inside this text before, so the text was like this. You know, it's a little bit confusing having this. Let me expand this. Having it like this, imagine my my cursor is not here at all. No, I wouldn't know that there's a text view here. So tools is just there to help you. Um, I'm coming, I'm sorry. So tools, just write it. Tools are there for you to um, set attributes temporarily on views but then it's only show in your editor here. It won't show when you run into your app. So that means when I use tools text here, like when I write text, I'm just using it as a placeholder so that I'll be able to see it here. If we run this app now, it will be empty on the phone because it's just for us to see here, not in the actual code. I think that's, that's okay now, right? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, welcome. So let me go back to design. So you have this here. Let me set um, the size. Click size. Now I forgot to click this first. You have to click this, then come back here. Click size 14 SP. Let me increase to 18 SP. 18. I'm going to use all. They should be, yeah, now I have this. Let me run this on oh, my phone. I'm going to disconnect right now. This is broken. I'm coming. Um, I'm sorry, I have to connect my phone back using Wi Fi. I'm sorry. Just give me some minutes. I had it running before. Boss, teach us Yahoo. <laughs> Which Yahoo? I'm coming. Uh, my my cord, my USB cord has issues, so that's why I prefer connecting with um, Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Um, ah. Connect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm. I think it's back now. When he, he, I'm alone. 
I'm sorry. Okay, we have it here. Let's run. And let me call this guy out. Again. Ah, my time connection is stable. That's what I love. Uh, this is kind of blurry. They want me to pay and I don't have money. Just wait for let's continue with other things and it runs we'll see. I think it's on a good F1. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want us to still run it. So that, that's very good to have to have a system that is powerful or mark good in short. Bye Mark sir. Come on, buy one for me because here we have it. <laughs> Which one? So we have it here. If you notice now, we have text here, right? But we, we set this text using tools, not Android text. We use tools text. So that's why it's showing here and it's not showing here. So we have that now. So now coming back, uh, I don't know, I think since Android 4.1 or Android Studio 4.1 or 4.0, they started making this uh, every default app with dark mode. So let me just change it back. Um, so it, this is the output. So you don't, need, you don't need to worry about this. You just need to change your background back to white. To give us our normal, um, our normal view. Should have been started okay. So we have it here. So now let's try and generate write the actual um, uh, the code to roll the die. So we want to roll the die using this when we click this, we want it to generate a random number and display it here, this text here. So let's go back, let's go to the um, apparent back end file, our main activity of Katie. So here we can just say, now let's find a reference to both. Um, I'm sorry, our button and our text. So let's say um, our ID, so it's a uh, button, okay? Button and the ID is, uh, we have this. Um, Network issue. Okay, thank God it's back. Um, I'm sorry, it's my network. I'm sorry. Yeah, we understand, sir. Welcome back. Thank you. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so let's just continue. So our uh, display die number is a text view. So and the reference to it is our ID. And please, um, actually, assuming that we know some things here, but if you, if I write something or say something you don't understand, you can just follow me back immediately. 
All right, sir. So that's number, right? We have it. We have the two now. So we have the reference to two. Now we can say whenever we, we tap or press the roll button, one set it completely simple, right? Whenever we tap on it, we want it to we want to create. We will shorten the code later. Um, random my number. And we sent a range from one to six. We know our die have like one to six. There's no zero, there's no seven upwards. So we have one to six. Wanted to um, like this. Okay, then let me confuse how it was. I'm still working. Blue should not do it like this. Okay, I think I'm back. Okay, we can now say let's create another bar. We shorten in the output later. Okay, let me just say sites. Sites of our die, right? Then let's call this random random die number. Equals size size. Then what's wrong with my e e um, key? So size dot random. So now let's say once it want to display. Now we automatically have. It automatically selects one um, any number from one to six and saves it in this random die number. So we can now say um, our this um, this our text view. So display die number dot set the text. A random die number. Now, the random number we generated and used to stream. We all understand that, right? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for speaking up. Thank you. Thanks a million. So, uh, this line right here, right? Or from the, from where? For, start from the um, defined view, defined view, defined view ID. From that, this okay. line number. This. Yes, that, okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. So thing is with Android, whenever you have views here, the views that we have here, until you tell, you know this XML, right? Yes. This is more yes. like the front end. If you are if you are comparing Android with um web development guys now, hmm? so we okay. can say this XML is for the front end. What you see, okay. the screen, the activity. Then okay. the main activity, the KT here, because okay. we are using Kotlin. If we are using Java, it will be main activity dot Java. So okay. this Java or Kotlin file is for the back end. Okay. Well, all the things that happen behind, like in the phone's processor back end about the views in this front end, it won't know that you have them there. Okay. You understand? So oh, that yeah. means this text view, this is text view, this is important. These two are not known to this main activity KT file. Okay. You understand? So yeah. that means you have to give a reference of these two views in the KT file. So that's okay. why we are creating. So that's why we are creating a reference to them here. So that's why we say, wow, you know the meaning of wow, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So we, now you, have, you want to, let's let's initialize our button first. Okay, sorry, let's do the text first. So we give it a name that we want, any name that you want. So me, I want to call it display die number. number. I want to call this text view here, this one. I want to call it okay. display dynamic. Okay. Then I want to okay. call this row button and uh, roll button. Roll okay. button. So that you know it's okay. important. Okay. okay. So now we come here. 
you give it, you're giving it a name here. So you can now say equals to um, this main activity case, you find the view. That's the of find view. Okay. And view by its ID. Okay. It has a, an ID. The ID, okay. uh, sorry, the text. This is the ID. Okay, dice number. Dice number. So that means it's a must make reference to in this, in this okay. case file, in your backend. Okay. So the ID for this text view is dice number. The ID for this button is button rule. Okay. This. So we have our ID. So now we now tell it to find this view with this by this ID. So that's okay. why you have find view by ID. Okay. In this, you have to tell it what type of view it is. Yeah. Okay. It's a text view. Right? Yes. Then here, you now call the R class. This class, this R is a class that generates that you can use to point to any resource in your in your project. Button, right. images, anything, MP3 files, anything. You understand? You can read up on it in Android and developer. Right. Right. So now say R the ID. You are going to locate it with its ID. If it's a layout, okay. you say R the layout. You understand? So we want to locate okay. it with its ID. There was the ID, guys number. ID so number. now it, yes, that's the that is the ID here. See. You seen it, right? Yes, yes. Huh. So that means whenever you now say display die number, it now knows that you are referring to this dice number, dice number. text view. Okay. So the same thing for roll button now. All right, okay. You understand now? Yes, yes, I get now. And let me erase it because you can't have two. You can't write it twice. So it's same thing for roll button too. It's a button and the ID is button rule and you want to be calling it roll button this backend. Um, please have a question. Okay. Um, is it that, is there, is there, is there a sequence that maybe can you, is it, you can you place it anyhow? Is it maybe you are, let's say, you put display number for the variable display number over button, or is there one has to become before one? No, 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 no. You, you can you can put it in however you want. Okay, okay, okay. This one can come before and it okay. can be down. After, okay. You understand? Okay, okay. The thing is, you, you have to make sure that you initialize them both, okay, okay. right? Okay, yeah, or yeah, I guess. Before you now you call the name down. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So for the row button, I know that whenever I want, to, whenever I press the button, hmm, you want it to do something. Okay. So that's why after you initialize, you now call row button. You don't do this, at least in Java. Let me try it here. See, it wouldn't know before, because this initialization have to come before. I, I heard right? of it. Yeah, you understand, yeah. right? Yes. OK, so now set on click listener. Hmm? Yes. That whenever you click on roll button, you want it to do whatever is inside the listener. Okay, okay. That's clear, right? Oh, that's clear, that's clear. Yeah. Now, so we want to say now, we know our die has six sides. Yes. So that means we want to generate a random number from one. That was clear, that's clear, that's clear. Okay, okay. This one too. Is, is this it's one clear? clear, too? It's clear, also. It's clear okay. also. What of this one? Yeah, there, there's a problem. Two string. That one. There's a problem there. Okay, there's a problem two string. there. Two string. Two string. I don't understand that. Two string. Okay, two string. Okay, yeah. now you are just saying. Let me erase it. Then you see the error. It's telling you type mismatch, right? Okay. It okay. said it's it's waiting for a character sequence. This is just a string. Okay. But okay. it's you are giving it an integer okay. because this random number here. Yes. It's an integer because it's a number, right? right? Yes, yes, but yes. Then yes. you're you saying you want to set text. Okay. So that means whatever you want to set as text must be a string, not okay. a number. Okay. So if, if you want your text to display a number, you must convert it to string. Okay. So that's why you're having the to string. The to string method converts anything to string. You oh, understand? Okay. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. 
if you were trying to pass a normal string, like let's say my name, you don't need to say to string. Okay. What's a string? Okay. So I think this is clear now. Okay. Right? Okay. Yes. Now let's let's run our app again. Let, let me let, wait, let me say maybe let me say. Because this is an integer, so we are converting integers to string. That's why you have to string there. Is that yes, yes. Yeah, that's, yes. That's very good. Okay. So run it again. And come out. Oh my. Oh. I don't know what's up with Vaisal. Okay, it's back. Let me so that you're able to see it very well. But this may make it for skills. Okay, now. So let's click on it. Roll now. See now we have five here. Can you all see? Let me just increase it. Yes, yes. Okay. Let me just increase it a little bit. Let's say thirty-six. Let's do it. So just to start the activity. Okay. So now if I click on roll, it auto generates a number three. Roll three again, roll six, roll six, six, three, six, five, four, four, six, three. Now I think that's it. that's clear now, right? Yes. Okay. So now let's do something. Um, do we all know about classes and objects in Kotlin? Not that much. Maybe explain, please. Uh, it will actually, it may take our time. And we have, we are constrained by time here. Um, we'll catch along, we'll catch along. Just keep, keep going, we'll catch along. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, now, so um, in a bit to make our code a little bit shorter, and um, there's this thing that you do in, um, in um, programming in general, you try to write, make your code as short as possible, but then it mustn't be too complex. And you have to make, uh, I think, I, I don't know if the, the right word to use is decentralized, but you need to make your, your, you need to write your code in short, short chunks and then connect them to get together. Because when you have a very large code base, it will be difficult to maintain when you have all of them in one file. You understand, right? Yes, I understand. So that, that's one of the reasons that we have um, classes and objects and um, for code reusability, again, like you want to use the code over and over and, and different places in your code. So we can have an, a class outside, okay, let me just erase this small, small. Um, okay, let's do this, let's do this. Because of the time, let's finish our app first. Then we can now refactor our code to contain classes and anything we want to do. Is that is that okay with you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So now let's try and make this our app display an actual dive image, here, and it will change according to. Whatever random number our um, our app generates. So I've already downloaded the um, the images, the dice images from. It's in the um, this code now. Um, let me close this first. I think yeah, it's here. Add images to. That's what I'll you see you get a link there to download the text images. So I've downloaded them, it's in zip, and I've unzipped it here. These are the text images. Okay. okay. So let me close this. Now let's import them to Android Studio. You already know how to import um yes, yes, yes. images, right? Yes, okay, so yes. let's because you're having you have many, you have many images. Let's Use the resource manager to import them all, import variables here. Then, yeah, this is it here. These are the images. 
Let's select, let's select them all. One to six, one through six then, okay. Then just next finish. Okay, import. So you check it here, you check them here, you see them. Here they are, that's one to six. So we have them here. So, okay, let me just stop something. Okay, now let's just replace the text here, right? With the image, the images. Whenever you instead of instead of showing two, three, two, die image with two facing up. So let me just open um, the images for us here. Let's all see. So this is one. So this one facing up. So the same thing for two, two, six, like that. So let me close this. So now what we do here is let's create, let's remove this image view. Ah, sorry, text view. I'm using the design tab here. Let's delete this. Now, when you delete this, now you see something about reference that I told you earlier. Now, when you come here, we have a problem here. You see, it's telling you that, oh, I can't find the dice number text because okay. we've removed it. Yeah. So you have to remove the code here too. And see another problem here. You have to remove it because there's no reference to that text because okay. it's not even there. So you can come yeah. here, another image view. Here, uh, should we just start with one every time? Okay, let's just select this first. This folder, I'll attach it here. Okay, now this is too big for God's sake, so we have to resize it. Okay, let's resize it. Next. So, So let's give it a width. Okay, let's try 100 dp. Uh oh, okay, fine. Let's give it a height of, I think 100 by 100, is it good? Uh, Too small. Too small, right? Okay, okay. Let's double it then, maybe. 200 with oh, it's a PNG, it doesn't want to scale. I don't want to use scale type. Okay, how about like this? Then we constraint. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Actually, this should be like so let me attach this. Yeah, this. And this button touch to this. this and below uh, this one. Okay, let me give it a margin of sixteen. Of, uh, yeah. Okay. Content description. Okay, let's just solve that right now. It's actually kind of irritating to see. Oh, it's not blue. No. I think his network is down again. Oh, 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 oh. We are sorry, network. Uh, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, oh, thank God. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, someone is raising his hand. 
Someone raised his hand now. I think it's um, Matthew, right? Boss. Okay, I can just go Matthew on. Can. Yeah, you can go on. Okay. So um, I asked a question before by my network uh, went um, AWOL or whatever. Now, have you gone over um, storing strings like this to the string to SML file? Yes, yes. Okay. So we can just do the shortcut here. Alt enter, extract a um, string resource. This is the rule. And here we are having a problem that um, content description, this is actually used for um, the, how do I put it? Um, are they physically impaired people, right? So that they were able to use your app. So you can just say content description. Whenever they tap on the image, you tell them what's there. You can just say dice image. So let's extract, extract this too. Image content. So, so we cannot say um now I want to now I have the random number here, right? So let me check the time. Oh, ten to eight. So we want to display the dice. Hmm? And it should correspond to the random number that's generated. So what we can do here, we have we have a plethora of options. I don't think there's a switch in Kotlin. I think we can use when statement, we can use if else, we can use using for will be, will be crazy. <laughs> so let's use the when statement. When statement, uh, have you gone over loops and things like that before? Yeah, so I keep asking. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, fine. Yeah, so we are here with conditionals. Oh, conditionals, oh, that's fine then. So this um, control structures. So we can do, now let's say, uh, no, random, normally you pass integers. So you have the one random number. So when it is one, you want it to display Oh, uh, let me, I forgot to create the reference to the image view. So, uh, um, uh, image. Uh, by ID is an image view. And want to add our ID dot, um, I forgot to give it image um, ID. Uh, let's see. You have to be careful when renaming IDs in your in your constraint layout. This is what can happen. I just saw it now. So die image. I have the I'm not gonna say die image but set image something um, variable resource or person int to be five int. So then add dot drawable. Now that's one. So that means whenever, whenever we um this we click on the row button and it generates one as a random die number. So that means nine no. So that means want it to display dice one. This one. This one. Uh, that's it. So, meaning, whenever it's two, let me just, instead of um, adding this, let me just do this. Okay, so we can say, don't mind me, I'm just using short code. I made your, because still the same thing, right? Image, no, 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 no. 
resource algo size. So now we have one is two, one is three, four, five, six. Okay, we don't even need it yet. So we have three. Five, six. So, um, no questions, right? No, oh, no question. Okay, no fine. Question. So now, what you just did here is that um, whenever the the um random number that the compiler generates for us is one, you set it to one. That's one, two, when it's two, three, four, five, six, right? So have it like that. Oh gosh. Okay, so let's run this again. Okay, let's wait for that. It's building. Okay, I think our guy is done. Okay, it's neat. To restart, I have not restart the activity only. Okay, so our app is here, so let's roll. So we have four, roll, four again, six, four, five, three, two, four. So that it's basically working now. But then let's try and check some things now. Okay, we can actually, okay, uh, anyone notice anything that we can change? Let me ask that first. Like just to make our code more concise or look professional. The okay, time has gone already. So let's just do this. Like, you know, we have, when is more like um, nested if else statement, right? So if the random line number is one, do this. Else, if it is two, do this. Else, if it is three, do this. Till this part, else, if it is five, do this. Else, if it is six, do this. Most of the time, if you have chained or nested if else statements, the last if statement is actually not needed. Most of the time, not every time. It depends on your condition. So now we already said if it is one, two, if it is two, if it is three, if it is four, if it is five. If it is five, the only other option is six. Right? Yes. So we should be able to do this. Else. You all understand, right? Yes. So that's one thing we could do there. Um, the other thing we can do is say, now, having these two integer here, it's kind of redundant. You could say random die number, call this random die number, right? And then move this, and just say this, Random. Still the same thing. Do we all understand? Yes. Okay. That's fine. And our um industry is still even telling us there is something we can be that, that can be done here. Something we can do. The same variable declaration could be inline. Instead of declaring like this, say we can do something. Let's see. Inline variable. <laughs> Yeah, that, that will actually work. Do you understand this too? Oh, no. Okay. And also is telling us that instead of having it like this, declaring this first, it's telling us, you know, this random die number here, we are passing it here. Yes. So what Andrew is not telling us is that this initializing this is redundant. Okay. We could okay. actually say when let me just turn it back. When we have one to six, when 
And it, when the numbers from one to really six, good. when you pick the random number from one to six, yes. the number that we pick using this random, when it is, if it is one, you should yes. do this. When it is two, you should do this. You understand? Yes. Yes. So yes. Just yes, saying, yes. Okay. Okay. It looks, let's just return it back. Or you can go and try it in your ID. You understand? Is a way of shortening code. Instead of writing this out, you just transfer this. You know, this means that whenever you see random die number, this very it means this. Yes, yes. Okay, you you know, as as I am now, I'm a human being, right? But yes. then, but then my my parents named me Muhammad. Yes. So this is what this is. This, this random number is just a name for this okay. code execution okay. here. So okay. it, whenever it means whenever you see this name here, you are referring to this. this. Right. So that means whenever you see my full name, Muhammad Akwede Kossi, whatever you see it, they are referring to me. So mm -hmm. that's why it's saying, instead of calling this guy's name here, just put the guy himself here. This idea. And yes, don't wahala me. That's what it's more like. That's what it's saying, in essence. But instead of calling his name, just bring him here and put him here. Okay. Understand. So that you can actually in all this without refactoring anything, your code will run fine. It's just a way of writing code professionally and. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think let me just run this then. Um, this is eleven oh eight. Boss, are you there? Boss, I'm um, a better developer. Boss, I do. I, I should just use him to catch crews, please. He actually wore a better <laughs> to a dev first. <laughs> <laughs> he wore a better to developer festival. Good. He <laughs> just is yeah, yeah. not your normal type of no as normal yeah, type of developer. It's just that exceptional. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the cash cruise, but <laughs> yes, no, it's allowed. Your console will not log. <laughs> okay, um, I think I started 11 and 10. 10 what? Around 10, um, 10. Yes, around 10, 10. Okay, can you give me five minutes? No problem, sir. Thank you very much. So I um, actually promised to go over classes, right? So I will just rush over it. You can go and get the concept in the code lab, you understand? So one, there's something we can do here. We can actually change this. Okay, then let me use shortcuts. The whole of this for code readability, we can Can change it to a method on its own. Create function. Oh, sorry, function. It's function in the Kotlin. And paste the code here. Now we have an issue. Just hold enter. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. We, are, we actually need to bring this guy. Root button. Okay, don't need root button. This guy inside here. Do you all understand why I had to bring this down here? No. Okay, this is, now we are talking about a variable scope now. So um, maybe you go and read on that, but the reason why that happened is that, see this curly braces here, this one here. Yes, yes. This one here. This is the yes. boundary of this whole dice method. So that means if you now say, if you are, Okay, let me bring this out. Let me put it in the concrete method. Okay. So now, when you declare a variable uh, in a method, yeah. like this one, yeah. you can yeah. only call this name in okay. between the boundaries of that method. Okay. Now here, you say that image. Now here, yeah, you see it's coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, it's outside the territory. If you see that image here, no, it 
Chung Kong because the scope of this this guy is limited in the on-create method. That's why you need to bring it to where you're calling it. Okay. If you need this outside, if you need this dying image here, and you still need for something inside here, inside the concrete, the damage you can go. So this is a local group, local champion. It's only known in between, uh, sorry, within his local government area or something. But this guy here, you can say, you can now say here, right, okay, wow. That image. Uh, how do we even do this? The cutting again. Forgotten image view. Okay, I'm not supposed to do no. Forgotten how we do that. You can see this one here. Then initialize it here in the concrete because concrete comes. First, whenever you initialize, um, okay, okay, bar. Or you can use, okay, there's something we call late init, late initialization. So now, here, let me close this. You see the boundary now? This, yeah, yeah, that yeah, image yeah. Now is, yeah, um, so it's available to the rest here. Having, if you, uh, okay, it wants us to assert that it is not known. So um, this is another concept in Kotlin. You may need to go and the the one of the best. I'm uh, sorry. One of the advantages of Kotlin over Java is the null safety. So you can go and read up on that. So that's why I'm adding this. I'm telling this that it is. You should not worry that this that that image is not a null. I'm listening. No, because it's not here, it was not here, but then I initialized it here. So it's not no. So um, the concept of classes, oh, 11.13. The concept of classes, let me, let me uh, return this back to how it was. Because you don't need it to be a global variable. You don't declare a global variable when you don't need it. So, um, Concept of classes. Okay, let me just shift this down. It may happen that you may need to use your these dice to all these dice like many times in different parts of your um application. The normal thing you would do is come here to this package, then right click, and then have new, then Kotlin class or file. Then you create the dice or whatever name you want to give it, then you click OK. Then you to create another file like this, like this main advocate that we have. Then in there, you can now have class dice. What I'm doing here, this is this is still a class. What would you would have in that um sorry in that um file would still be like this. But this, I'm trying. I'm just trying to create a class inside of this class because I it's actually short, and I don't want to create another separate file. You understand? So this works too, but it's better than put it in a different file. So you can now move this inside this. So, but then now you can't call this inside this dice class again, because now the, the scope is different now. This is a, an, an entire class on its own. This is an entire class on its own. So what you can do with this, what, what we did here before, is limited to the own create, uh, sorry, the main activity that extends to... Uh, let me just stop there. But just know that you can do that when you, when your class extends an activity like this. So if you don't extend that activity, you can't call by find view find view by ID inside that class. Okay. So this concept of that, but um, if you go through the good lab, you understand it very oh good internet connection. Uh, I think I'm back. Um, so if you go through the code lab, you, you understand it. 
a little bit more. But um, let me just complicate this. You, you can actually go ahead and try it on your own. You can have your sites here. And then when you do that, your roll dice will now be something like dice. Now you understand random number say my dice my dice or my dice my dot random number. Okay, let me just roll the die. Tell it to return. I'm sorry, I've taken more than the five minutes I requested for. Random number. Eight. Mm -hmm. So we can just return this. Remember what, what we did earlier. You're not saying. Uh, I think I initialized this. Where is my that image? Okay, no, no, no. I don't want to make it equal. I don't want to make it. It's uh, an image of right? uh, I need to find an image of my So this is a class. And this is a function of this class. And this is an object of this text class. So I think there's no time to explain it, but you can go over it. Um, when you have the time. If you run your code, you will still work the same way, but this is looks a little bit um, more professional. So boss, I'm sorry for taking too much of your time. And, uh, thank you for presenting me this opportunity. Um, I think I'm done, thank you. Thank you.